All right, what we're going to be talking about today is chemical reactions and enzymes. So first of all, what is a chemical reaction? A chemical reaction is a process that changes one set of chemicals into another set of chemicals. It's shown by a chemical equation. So for example, hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas gives you water. The equation would say 2 H2s plus O2 gives you 2 H2O. When you look at this equation, I kind of like to think of equations as recipes. This tells you exactly what you need to put in in order to get water out. Just like if you were making cupcakes, you would need flour and sugar and you know oil and eggs and after you bake it, you wind up with cupcakes. The things that go into a reaction are called reactants. What you get out would be the products. So if we go back to our cupcake example, the reactants would be the flour and the eggs and the sugar and the oil, and the products would be the finished cooked cupcakes. All right, so whenever you're going um, into a chemical reaction, you've got things that are bonded together. Um, and in order to rearrange these, these atoms into what you want, you're going to have to break the bonds um, on the reactant side and then make bonds on the product side. Um, so in the example of the water reaction, um, you would have to, you know, you've got two H atoms stuck together uh, in hydrogen gas. You've got two oxygen atoms stuck together in, um, in oxygen gas. So you have to break those bonds and then rearrange them and make new bonds to make the H2O. So we've talked about this back in, um, in the energy unit, uh, the cell energy unit photosynthesis and uh, respiration, but bonds are energy. So in order to break a bond, you're going to need energy. Uh, in order to make a bond, you're going to need energy. So the energy can either be absorbed or released. Uh, and many of us have seen chemical reactions where energy is released. Obviously, anytime you have an explosion, this is, an, this is a release of heat, a release of light, sound. Um, absorbing reactions would actually feel cold. To the touch. So we can diagram uh, what energy does throughout the course of a reaction, and these are called energy diagrams. Um, what you see here, this is an energy absorbing reaction, which means that energy at the end of the reaction is going to be more than in the beginning. And if you look down here, you have a flat plateau here at the beginning, and you have a flat plateau here at the end. These are the reactants. This is what you're starting with. Down here, this is time. So as we move from left to right um, on this diagram, time is progressing in the reaction. The y-axis is energy. Okay, so if you look at this reaction, the reactants start out down here. And then through the course of the reaction, energy is needed to get the reaction going. We'll talk about what that is here in a minute. And then notice, here are the products. Now if you compare the energy of the products to the energy of the reactants, the products have more energy, which means throughout the course of the reaction, energy must have been absorbed. Okay, now just like Mr. Del Baccio just talked about in his energy absorbing reaction, this is the reverse. This is called an energy releasing reaction because the energy that you started with is greater than the energy that you wind up with at the end. Now, energy um, diagrams like this one that you see here and the energy absorbing reaction that you saw on the last slide, I like to say um, kind of remind me of a water slide. Whenever you are looking at an energy diagram, the reactants start here. So this flat plateau right here are the reactants and your goal is to get to the products. Now. If you go to a water park and you want to go down a water slide, you first have to walk up all of the stairs. And that is what's putting the energy in. Once you get to the top of the slide, which is right up here, this is the easy part. Now you just slide down the slide and you wind up where you're meant to go. And that's how energy diagrams work. You start in one place, you have to put the energy in, and then eventually you get to where you want to be. 
And all things in life are reactions. If you think about it, you have to put in the work to get to where you want to be. If you study and work really hard, come the day of the test, everything's easy. You just wind up with an A. If you are baking a cake, you have to put in all of the work, get the ingredients, make, mix the ingredients, make the ingredients. And then once you put everything in the oven, that part's easy. You just wait for it to cook. And that's how energy diagrams go. You start off with reactants, you put in energy to get up here to the top, and then you get your products. Now, what we call that peak of the diagram is called the activation energy. That's the energy that's required to get a reaction started. Now, different reactions have different amounts of activation energy. Energy absorbing reactions have greater activation energy. So here you can see we're starting off real low and they have to absorb all of this energy to get up here to the top before we can wind up with the products. Right. So an, an enzyme we've talked about on the first day are made of proteins. And enzymes help speed up chemical reactions in the body. They're also known as catalysts. Um, if you ask a chemist uh, what an enzyme is, they, they call it a catalyst. And all enzymes pretty much end in ACE, A-S-E. So anytime you have, you see a word that ends in ACE, it's probably an enzyme. So examples here, lactase, amylase, catalase, and helicase. And helicase we've heard of before. You may have heard of lactase. It's the enzyme that breaks down lactose. Okay, amylase you find in your saliva. Um, catalase is a catalyzing reaction. Uh, and helicase obviously unzips um, the DNA. So notice how they all end in ACE. So why do we need enzymes? Well, some reactions are just too slow. It takes too long to build up that activation energy. And the activation energy is so much that it would take too much heat in your body in order to actually um, break down your food or, or do whatever that enzyme needs to do. So if you take a look at this picture, this is an activation diagram. Okay, now notice this first line here. This is the reaction pathway without an enzyme. It's kind of grayed out. And you can see kind of that's how it would be normally. Okay, you've got the reactants here and the products here. All right, the activation energy would be from the reactants to the top of the hump. Okay, whatever that happens to be. That, that area right there. That's the activation energy. Now, if we use an enzyme, if we use an enzyme, then what happens is the hump isn't as, isn't as big. You've got this hill that has decreased in size. The amount of energy you'd have to put in, going back to Miss Genitoni's uh, water slide example, you won't have to put so much energy in to get to the top. And, and you still end up in the same place. So the, the activation energy for the enzyme reaction would only be that big. So again, this is without, and you got the arrows over here. This is without, and this is with. Okay, so the activation energy has decreased. So again, this would be if you walked up the stairs. Whereas with an enzyme, it would be if the water park had an elevator, or if it had an escalator. It would take a lot less energy to wind up in the same place. They're the protein catalyst in every organism, enzymes. Through enzymatic action, your metabolism is driven, enzymes. In Staphylococcus, jellyfish, tarantulas, and trees, they lower activation energy, enzymes. When you and me, now enzymes. You got them in your cells where they do cellular digestion, enzymes. You got them in your mouth and in your stomach and intestines, enzymes. The thing in enzyme acts upon us called the substrate. They fit like lock and key with complementary shape. Enzymes speed up reaction rates. Enzymes. An enzyme binds its substrate at its active side. Enzymes. Bound together in a complex where they snuggle so tight. Enzymes. New bonds will form and break due to the active sites. Chemistry reactants become products. It's an enzyme specialty. Product gets released. Enzyme repeats its action readily. Enzymes. 
like any molecule and enzyme shape defines its function enzymes environmental change it changes shape leads to malfunction enzymes every enzyme has a ph where it catalyzes best a ph change will send enzyme activity to rest enzyme also sensitive to easily upset enzymes raw heat until a certain point increases their efficiency enzymes but too much heat denatures them, destroying their activity enzymes. That's why a fever running high is a dangerous situation. All that heat can alter enzymatic conformation. Keep it 98.6 for enzyme optimization. Enzymes. Enzymes in saliva will break starch into glucose. Enzymes. If you lack the enzyme lactase, then you won't enjoy milk lactose. Enzymes. His sex galactosemia and PKU disease Caused by inherited enzyme deficiencies Enzymes, they're what everybody needs Enzymes All right, so enzyme action. How do enzymes work? Well, to begin with, enzyme action is split up into parts. The first part is the substrate. This is the molecule that will be acted on. Another name for a substrate would be reactant, the thing that goes into the reaction. So enzymes are very specific for their substrate. For example, lactase only works on lactose, just like Mr. Dabaccio told you a little while ago. You have to remember, enzymes are proteins, and proteins have a specific shape to determine what their function is. And enzymes are the same way. They're designed to only have one specific job to do. The next part of enzyme action is something called the active site. This is the place on the enzyme where the substrate fits into, kind of like a parking spot. That's where your car will fit. Um, you can also think of the substrate as the key that goes into the active site, which is the lock on your front door. They fit together, just like a lock and a key. The third piece is called an enzyme substrate complex. And I know that sounds complex, but it's actually pretty easy. It's when the substrate is bonded to the enzyme, when they're actually attached. So enzymes give a place where a reaction can happen. Um, so it, when we start talking about chemistry and next year when you start getting into particle theory, particles have to, have to kind of hit in order to react. Enzymes kind of say like, here I am, come over here so we can get this reaction going. Uh, the nice thing is the enzyme is not used up in the chemical reaction. So your body, once they make enzymes, they don't have to make any more enzymes. They have them forever. Uh, they're there at the beginning of the reaction, and they're there at the end. Now, enzymes, since they are proteins, can be affected by the same things that can affect proteins, temperature and pH. If you subject enzymes to high temperature, what happens is their shape will change. And if their shape changes then what happens is they're no longer useful. Uh, same thing with pH, that would be adding an acid or a base. If you change the shape of a protein, then it becomes denatured. It becomes not useful for what it was, its original job would be. Let's discuss the structures of enzymes. The activities of enzymes are determined by their three-dimensional structure. The substrate molecule binds to its enzyme like a key in a lock. The enzymes are so specific that the set of enzymes made in a cell determines which metabolic pathways occur in that cell. For an example, think of Legos. The large blue Lego is the enzyme. The green and the red Legos are the substrates. The enzyme will only bind to specific substrate, substrate that fits its structure. The area where it binds to the substrate is called the active site. As we see here, the blue piece cannot bind to the red ball. When the enzyme binds to the substrate that fits its specific structure, bonds are created. As we see here in our example, the tape represents the bond, and the two substrates create a new molecule.
the enzyme can do this over and over again until enough products have been formed. As we said, enzyme structure determines function. 